and say this is for my great 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 granddaughter so she can have the blind weed made in Malaysia. Who ever saw some shit? You ever see somebody say, I'm passing these Air Jordans down. They're the special edition 15s. Michael Air Jordan 15. So my great, 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 great grandson can have a pair of the special edition Jordan 15s. Sirac Vodka! So my great, great, great grandkids can know what it was like to turn up! Philadelphia, we need the nation in justification. We just passed San Francisco. Yeah. Guess what else Philadelphia needs the nation in? Charter schools. So what is the relationship between the charter school and gentrification? It's real simple. If you want to get rid of black people, you can't just show up and force them to leave. You got to make it look like you're coming to help them. Correct. So what you do is you show up in a black ghetto in Houston and tell the black folks that you opened up a charter school. And the mothers and fathers will be so excited that they now have an educational option that they won't pay attention to the fact that all the teachers and staff who work for the charter school are buying up all the houses in the neighborhood and all the storefronts and all the lots and they secretly raising up the property value. Do some research. Look at the cities with the most charter schools. They have the highest amounts of gentrification. That's a fact. If you want to get rid of black people, act like you want to help their kids. They won't push back. Guess who else is part of the gentrification movement? The banks, excuse me, not the banks, the universities. The universities and colleges are some of the biggest gentrifiers in the city. Give me the top schools in Houston, and I'll tell you the top gentrifiers in Houston. Did you know the number one job of a university is not education, but real estate? Did you know the number one business of McDonald's is not burgers and fries, it's real estate? Yes! The fast food joints the banks, the universities and colleges, and the charter schools are all part of the gentrification movement. Teach. And you Negroes got a nerve to think when you see a new Walmart, you thought that was for you. Uh. I was in the ghetto the other week, they built a new Walmart in North Philly. I had a Negro saying, wow, look what they gave us. <laughs> Negro, three things when you see them, you know you ain't got much longer in that neighborhood. Walmart, Facts. movie theater, Facts. Starbucks! Facts. You see a Starbucks, it's over. <laughs> Big girls come and say, oh my God, my neighborhood has improved so much. When I was growing up, we didn't have a Starbucks now. We got a movie theater, I could walk to the movies. I got a Walmart down the street. Negro! This ain't for you! White folks showing up, putting cars in your door, you ever thought about selling? <laughs> and y'all so thirsty, you say, well, my mom paid $50,000 for this house back in 1940. The white people offer me $250,000. I stand to make $200,000. No, you don't, because you're not accounting for the cost of, what's the word? Inflation. Not only that, can I ask you a question? Once you take that little measly $250,000 for grandma's house, which is probably worth a million, but once they give you that quarter mill that you're going to pay taxes on, where are you going to live at? Do you know what you're what you about to go do? What is your silly ass about to go right there and not leave you? Buy another house! You already own one! But you were so intoxicated at the sight of money that you didn't even realize they are making you homeless or will make you buy all over again. And this time, you ain't gonna pay 50 grand like grandma. Stop selling your real estate. Hold on to it for your children. Every time I see a nigga sold their house, I say, what about your kids? What do you mean, what about my kids? What about passing wealth down? What do you think is worth more than your great-grandson? This $250,000 that ain't gonna be around when he's 45? Or if you would have held him to that house which will still be around when he's 25. The problem with black people is we don't think about generations unborn. We think about ourselves. We are one generational thinkers. We might be two generational thinkers. We'll think about our kids. We might be three generational thinkers. We might think about our grandkids. But I tell you what, you're not. You're not a 20 generational thinker. You're not a 50 generational thinker like the Chinese. They thinking about their great, great, great grandchildren, great, great, great grandchildren. We don't think that long. 
You know how I know? Because if you did, you wouldn't be spending $30 billion on weed permanent beauty products every year. Because you can't pass no damn weed down. Now, have you ever seen somebody take off that nasty ass thing and put it in a family book? And say, this is for my great, great, great granddaughter so she can have the blind weed made in Malaysia. Who ever saw some shit? You ever see somebody say, I'm passing these Air Jordans down. They're the special edition 15s. Michael Air Jordan 15. So my great, 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 great grandson can have a pair of the special edition Jordan 15s. So you spend $30 billion a year on weed permit beauty. You spend $2 billion a year on Air Jordan. What about liquor? Have you ever seen somebody say, I'm gonna put this special bottle of effing. Well, what else should I drink? Crown Royal. What else out there? Because I don't drink. Patron. I'm gonna save this. Sirac vodka. So my great 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 grandkids can know what it was like to turn up back in 2021. Can somebody tell me what do black people pass down that we waste money on? Help me out. Well, let's go to chicken, turkey, beef, and pork. We spend $800 million a year, nationally, black people, on chicken, turkey, beef, and pork. Have you ever seen somebody wrap up a Sunday dinner and say, I'm gonna save this. <laughs> this damn heart disease and cancer. I'm gonna save this for my great, 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 so they can know how grandma made her chicken and ribs. <laughs> huh? What about the video games? That y'all buy y'all kids. And can I say this? I want to know how is there a video game system in a house with a child barely passing school? Come on. Please, somebody help me. I'm a little lost, Texas. Texas, I'm a little lost because I'm seeing little kids with these units. How much the unit cost? A PlayStation is how much for you? Five. And what's another one? Uh, space Station. How much is the Xbox? About 500. The games on average cost what? When you go get a new $60. Y'all see that? So you spend five for the unit. It's about 60 for the game. And somebody told me the other day that there's some games you have to subscribe to online and pay a regular fee to keep playing. So this is like crack. And your son and daughter got these $500 units with $60 games. And they got like 20 games, but he barely passed the math. How in the hell you got a $500 game unit you can barely read? No special ed child should have a video game unit in their house. Unless they're deaf, they can't do nothing about it. Blind, can't do nothing about it. Brain injury, can't do nothing about it. Autistic, can't do nothing about it. But if you tell me your child got an IEP for a so-called reading disability and a so-called math disability and a so-called ADHD and a so-called conduct disorder and a so-called emotional disturbance, no video game unit in the house. Because you can do something about all of those. Oh yeah. Because if I'm the first to test, the learning disability is not a scientific reality. That's a white man's opinion. The math disability is not a scientific reality. It's a white man's opinion. ADHD is not a scientific reality. It's a white man's opinion. Conduct disorder, intellectual disability. Most of the labels that black kids have in Texas are not scientific. Oh, you don't believe me? Let me ask you a question. Where in the brain is the reading disability? Is it in the front? Is it back here with the nappy kitchen? Is it up here where you got the slow in? Can somebody show me where the ADHD at? Where's that? Where is the emotional disturbance? Is it on the side? Is it by the third eye? Isn't it amazing that your children's lives are being destroyed by diseases that can't be seen with a urine sample? Can't be seen with a blood sample. Can't be seen x-ray. Can't be seen ultrasound. 
can't be seen in my eye. And you know why they can't be seen? Because they don't exist. ADHD ain't nothing but ain't no daddy at home. Ain't no daddy at home. 90% of black boys taking ADHD medicine don't have a father figure in their life. This ain't got nothing to do with no neurological deficiency. This is about locking up black men and leaving the mothers at home to raise men on their own. ADHD ain't nothing but absence of discipline from the home. And if you say that, it ain't absent from the dad from home, and it ain't absent from discipline home, then it's an artificial diet at home. Too much sugar, too much caffeine, too much high fructose corn syrup. Don't talk to me about no ADHD until you go home and throw out everything in your cabinet and in your fridge made from sugar and sweetness. Because your children are addicted to sugar. Sugar is a drug, and sugar was once classified as a drug by the Food and Drug Administration. And the only reason why sugar was taken off the list of drugs is because it would it would it would lead to a significant loss of revenue for the sugar companies if they had to sell it as a controlled substance. That's why sugar looks like crack, weighs like crack, and got the same side effects as crack. Some of y'all itching right now for a damn fix. 